Healing was an important part of Jesus' ministry while he was on earth as a tool to show his power and authority. Similarly, it should also be a part of our ministry as well to show the power and the love of Jesus to those who are sick. In today's episode, we'll talk about how to pray for the sick during crusades and evangelistic outreaches and how to effectively show them God's love. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Welcome to the Evangelism Podcast with Dr. Daniel King, where Daniel interviews full-time evangelists, pastors, missionaries, and normal everyday Christians to discover how they share their faith, their powerful testimonies, and amazing stories that will inspire you to reach people with the good news. And now, here's your host, missionary and evangelist, Daniel King. All right, how to pray for the sick. Usually, when I do my messages, I will do the salvation part first, and then I will go into the healing part. So I just shared the story of the boat. The first part of the story is how the boat was redeemed. It was bought back. So I would use that point to talk about how Jesus died on the cross to redeem us back from the devil, to pay the price for sin, and to set us free. And so I would use that part of the story. But then I would use the part of the story where John goes and repairs the boat to talk about healing. And so I would give the salvation call. The greatest miracle is when Jesus forgives your sins. If you want Jesus to forgive your sins, lift up your hand to heaven. And then after we get through the the altar call point, say, now we're going to pray for the sick. But I want to build the faith of people to believe for their bodies to be healed. And so usually I'll share a simple story from uh, the healing miracles of Jesus. You can pick any one of the healing miracles of Jesus, but like I'll share the story of the, the leper who came to Jesus. One time there was this leper. Leprosy was a horrible disease. It caused your fingers to fall off, your face to become disfigured, and leprosy was highly contagious. And so this man had been kicked out of his village. No one wanted to spend time with the leper because they didn't want to catch his disease. And so this lonely leper, one day he was out there all by himself. He heard a story about how Jesus was healing the sick. And he wondered, I wonder if Jesus can heal me. He heard about how Jesus was healing the blind, about how Jesus healed the crippled man. He said, I wonder if Jesus can heal me. And so he went and found Jesus and he he knelt down in front of Jesus and he called Jesus Lord. He says, Lord, are you willing to heal me? And Jesus reached out his hand and touched the leper. For many years, no one had wanted to touch him. Even his own mother wouldn't touch him. But Jesus reached out his hand and touched the leper. And he says, yes, I am willing to be healed. And Jesus healed the leper. It says instantly he was completely healed. And so Jesus is reaching down from heaven right now to touch you. Whatever you need from Jesus, Jesus is reaching down. He wants to touch you so that you can be healed. Jesus said to the leper, I'm willing to heal you. And Jesus says to you tonight, I am willing to heal you. You might be wondering right now, can Jesus heal me? Does Jesus see me? Does he want me to be healed? And Jesus says, yes, I am willing. The same answer that Jesus gave to the leper reverberates across the centuries and answers the question today. Sometimes people ask, is God willing to heal me? I say, yes, God is willing to heal me. Reach out your hand right now to Jesus. He, your arm might be short, but his arm is very long. He's reaching down from heaven right now, and Jesus is ready to touch you right now. Let's pray for you to be healed. And then pray a prayer, uh, and, and then uh, ask people to begin to do something they couldn't do before. And Jesus heals people. Uh, the more often you pray for people to be healed, the more people you'll see healed. Uh, you're not the healer. Jesus is. I like what Daniel Kalinda says. He says, uh, miracles are the easiest part of my job because I don't perform them. Be open to flowing in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. One preacher who was really great at this was Richard Roberts, the son of Or Roberts. I went with him to Ibadan, Nigeria, and he he used uh, words of of knowledge really powerfully. Uh, He would often say, there's 14 people here with bad backs, and 14 people would come up and and they would be healed. And so I remember uh, one uh, word he gave, there's a little boy. And you have pain in your stomach. You're seven years old. You have pain in your stomach. Right now, Jesus is healing me. 
And in that crusade, I was playing the role of the person who would interview people before they would come up on the platform. And so a few minutes later, here comes this mother, and she's bringing her little seven-year-old boy, and she says when he gave that word of knowledge, he began, the little boy began to cough, and he coughed up a tapeworm that was like this long. And she says, he, he's feeling better now, and I brought the tapeworm so you can see. And she had it in a little ba plastic baggie. She was going to show all the people the tapeworm that the little boy had healed from a word of knowledge. But you don't need a word of knowledge. All you need to know is that Jesus heals. It's not your super word of knowledge. If, if you flow in that, great. We should desire all the spiritual gifts, flowing word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits, all that stuff. But when Jesus, uh, he's the healer. And so you don't need any special spiritual gift. Uh, I don't think I particularly have a gift of healing on my life. I just preach God's word. It's God's word that brings healing to people. And so you want to bring people to a point where they uh, are using their faith. And so I encourage people to take a step of faith. I say, examine your body after we get done praying. Pray a big prayer. Lord, I pray for every sick person to be healed. I, I come against the spirit of cancer. Cancer, be gone now in the name of Jesus. Blind eyes, be opened in the name of Jesus. Uh, if you're crippled, I command strength to enter into your legs and to strengthen your legs right now. Jesus is here. He's touching people here right now. If you'll reach out to Jesus, he will heal you. He will touch you right now. Don't look to me as a man. I can't heal you. Look to Jesus right now. Jesus will heal you. If you'll focus on Jesus, look to Jesus and say, Jesus, heal me. Come on, everyone, just lift up your hand to heaven and say, Jesus, heal me. Jesus, heal me. And right now, I want you to take a step of faith and begin to do something that you couldn't do before. If you had pain in your back, just begin to move your back. Don't look for the pain. Look for the miracle. God is healing people's backs right now. If you have pain in your leg, just begin to lift your leg. If you have a crutch, lift your crutch up in the air and take a step. And we'll see people. You can see people. They will lift their crutch, and they'll, they'll, they'll be wobbling there. They can barely stand up, and they'll, you know, they'll be... You know, and, and then you'll begin to see them straighten up as they take a step of faith. It, it, and, uh, you know, some of those same people, you, you see them uh, walking like that, and then 10 minutes later they come up on the platform. They got their shoulders back, and they're holding their crutch up in the air. Jesus healed me. Jesus healed me. I mean, it's, a, it's amazing what God does. And, uh, I mean, it's just Jesus is a healer. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so then... I'll invite people to come up to the front. If Jesus has healed you today, I want you to examine your body. See what Jesus has done. If you had a growth in your body, put your hand on the growth. See if the growth has disappeared. If you brought a friend who was blind, test their eyes to see if they can see. If Jesus has healed you today, I want to hear about what Jesus has done. I want you to, to come forward and, and tell me what Jesus has done. Often I'll say, you know, if, if, if Jesus has healed you, if you feel better tonight, if you came with pain and now... The pain is gone. Just lift your hand up to heaven. And then I'll say, all those with your hands lifted, just come forward right now and tell me what Jesus has done. And then people will get shy. They'll put their arms down. I'm not sure I really received a miracle. They probably did, but, you know, they're shy. But, you know, I'll say, ma'am, over there, you, you, did you receive a touch from Jesus? Do you feel better? Come up here. Come and tell me what Jesus did. Come, come, you know. So in a big, a big festival, you don't have an opportunity really to individually lay hands on everyone. You know, if you have 100 or 200 people, you can lay hands on people. You'll be exhausted by the time you get finished. But if you have, you know, 1,000 people, you can't do that. So you have to use your words to build faith in people to look to Jesus for their healing miracle. And don't be discouraged. This is what T.L. Osborne told me. He said, don't be discouraged if people don't come up right away. He says, it, it'll take time. People are... They're wondering what happened. They never felt that before. And so I just keep talking people through. Just uh, if you had a bad back, just move your back. How do you feel? How do you feel? And, and it's amazing. Sometimes miracles are progressive where it'll start and, and then, you know, it'll take a few minutes for them to, to start to receive the miracle. And so don't get discouraged. This is the toughest part sometimes is you preach a message and, and, and nobody gets healed. That's tough. But 
that's not actually what's happening. People are being healed because God's word work. God confirms his word with signs following. Sometimes it just takes time for people to get to the point where they have boldness to come up. One time I was preaching in India, and we prayed for people to be healed. In the first night, not a single person came up. The second night, not a single person came up. I just kept preaching healing. And the third night, one little old lady came up, and she came up and says, uh, I was blind in my right eye. I was healed the first night, but I didn't know if it was a real healing or not. I can see now. I just wanted to make sure. And so I was healed the first night. And she says, now it's been two days. I can tell you that I've been healed. And because she had the boldness to come up, it broke something. And then that night we had dozens of people that were all healed the first and second night. They just wouldn't come up. And even some of their pastors told them, don't come up until you know it's a real miracle. And, and you know, so, but then people would come up, and, the, and, and by the time we finished that, we had dozens, maybe hundreds of people that were healed in that particular crusade. So don't be worried if it doesn't happen right away. Just keep, and, and same thing with somebody. If people don't understand somebody, they'll go back and preach the sermon again. If, if I pray for people to be healed, and it doesn't seem like anyone has been healed, I'll just go back and tell another healing story. Sometimes I'll tell two or three healing stories and, 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 and tell people will get healed. Because what you're doing, you're building faith in people. You're using God's word to, to build faith. Okay, so when you're asking people to share their testimonies, this is one of the most difficult things to get right because you have a lot of different dynamics. You have a translator, you have the person, you have the, the microphone. Um, and and uh, so this is something I actually rehearse with my translator. I say, okay, translator, I'm going to stand right here. I want you to stand right here, and then I want the person who's healed to stand right here. And I know that there's a camera right there. We're trying to get the camera shot, too. There's a lot of different things to think about here. And so I'll say, what did Jesus do in your life? And I'll stick my microphone out, and he'll translate what I say, and then the person will share with the audience what has happened. But I want to keep control of my microphone because sometimes people will grab the microphone and they might start talking about when I was a baby, uh, my grandma told me that da-da-da-da, and I have no idea what they're saying. So I'll, I'll hold on to the microphone, and if it seems like they're kind of getting off track, I'll grab it back and ask them another question to, to keep, get, the, get the testimony out. Um, and I tell my translator, now, now different evangelists do this differently, uh, if you've ever seen Benny Hinn, Benny Hinn has someone on the side who comes up and says, Pastor Benny, this man was dead for eight years. He was brought in a bag of bones. And tonight while you were preaching, Jesus touched the man. Flesh came out of his bones. And here he is. He's walking. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bring him here. Touch. <laughs> so that's how Benny Hinn does it, right? He has the person coming up from the side. But then you have other evangelists, you know, and, and so you're, you're doing the testimony. And that's great if you have someone who can, who can do that, bringing them up. But if it's only you, you got to work with your translator, and, and you don't know if this is a real miracle or not. you got to find out and say, praise the Lord, you got a miracle. And so you're there, you're interviewing the person. What did Jesus do for you? I tell my translator, I want you to repeat in the microphone everything that I say, and then when that person is speaking, I want you to whisper in my ear. Don't use your microphone. Whisper in my ear what she's saying so that I know. And then he'll say, she, for 12 years, she had this pain. Now the pain has gone. She had pain in her stomach. Uh, went to the doctors. And so now, oh. Hallelujah. This woman, for 12 years, she's had pain in her body. Now Jesus has touched her, and, and she's been healed. Mama, tell me. Uh, where did you have pain in your, in your body? And, and so, like, begin to do something that you couldn't do before. If you had pain in your back, just, just uh, begin to move your back, and I'll get her to move her back. Or if it was someone who was blind, I want something that the whole audience can see. Some miracles are, are great miracles. You know, I got healed from a headache. It's just hard for the audience to see that. So I'll let them testify. But if it's a miracle that they can demonstrate, say, you know, if they were blind, I'll pull out a handkerchief and say, here, try to touch this handkerchief. 
and, and get them to come over here. Or if they, they were deaf, I'll get them. Um, I want you to stand there, and I'm going to clap my hands. And when I clap, you clap. And so I'll clap my hands, and then come back, and they'll clap. And so you look for a way that you can share the, uh, the testimony in a way that the crowd can see that, that this is a, a real testimony. And if they brought someone with them, say, who brought this? Who brought, brought this blind man? Here, come up here. And then you can interview that person. Tell me, was he really blind? How, how long has he been blind? What village did you come from? How, how long did it take you to get here? And I'll, I'll interview and, and ask those questions. And I'm creating a story. Are you called by God to be an evangelist? Do you want to lead millions of people to Jesus? Do you desire to be trained in the practical side of building a ministry? Then check out the Daniel King School of Evangelism. Learn how to be an effective evangelist from Dr. Daniel King's 20 plus years of experience. Daniel King has done crusades all over the world in over 70 nations and has seen over 2 million people give their lives to Jesus. But it wasn't easy. There was no crusade school. So Daniel traveled the world, learning from an observing top evangelists, noticing how they successfully won souls for Christ. Now he wants to share decades of knowledge and experience with you. Topics of the Daniel King School of Evangelism include what is an evangelist, how to be a master soul winner, how to give an altar call, how to organize a crusade, how to raise money for your ministry, and much more. If you want to be an evangelist but don't know where to start, the Daniel King School of Evangelism is for you. Enroll today in the School of Evangelism by going to danielkingministries.com slash evangelism. Thanks so much for listening today. I am excited about telling people about Jesus, and I want to invite you to be a part of helping us to rescue people from hell and take them with us to heaven. There's two things you can do to help. First of all, can you go find the Evangelism Podcast on Apple iTunes and leave us a positive review? By giving a review, you will help other people find these valuable resources about sharing our faith. And second, would you become a financial partner with King Ministries? Every single dollar that people give us enables us to lead at least one person to Jesus. And so that means for only one dollar, you can help start a party in heaven. And so today, I want to invite you to become a monthly partner. You can start out for just a dollar, but if God puts it on your heart to do more, of course you can do more. But please go to kingministries.com and become a monthly partner with us today to help us to lead more people to Jesus. Thank you so much, and God bless you. For more information about how to share your faith or to financially support our worldwide evangelistic outreaches, visit kingministries.com. Again, that's kingministries.com.